tomorrow is promised to no man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when when you deal with seniors for 10 years, we got into the business, everyone we worked with was 65, right? Sure. 10 years later, they're 75. And and friend, you can see people age between 65 and 75, and it's pretty dramatic. <laughs> We are Bill and Amy, and we uh, are, well, we're sailors, uh, and our life's ambition was to go sailing. Uh -huh. And so in uh, about 2007, we sold everything we owned. We sold the house, we sold everything in the house. In fact, we had a closet in Amy's dad's home that he let us have for storage. So we had to compress our entire lives into one closet. <laughs> and then we moved on to our sailboat and we sailed literally around the globe. And it took us seven years to do it. It was a tremendous adventure. And I I uh, cannot tell you what a life experience it was. On our return, Amy's stepmother had been selling Medicare Advantage plans. Yeah. And I got to tell you, in Southwest Florida, Medicare Advantage plan is a ton of health insurance at zero cost. And as a salesman, when you tell me, okay, I want you to sell this product that pays a pretty good commission. Okay, what does the product cost the consumer? Nothing. That's hard to believe. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. It's yeah. the truth. And, and yeah. so, you know, it, it sounds like a pretty easy sale, doesn't it? Yeah. And in fact, in our experience, we if we get in front of a prospect, we close over 90%. Yeah. So it has been a wonderful sale and it's been a wonderful career. For yeah. about 11 years now as Medicare specialists in yeah. Southwest Florida, which is frankly yeah. a target-rich environment. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. How old were you guys when you when you, when you you ended your, your sailing adventure of seven years? I had my 50th birthday in the middle of the Atlantic. So that means he was 58. So we were 50 and 58 when we got back. Okay. Right about there. So And so that puts us back in Florida looking for careers, right? Right. And I... I'd been in radio broadcasting for 35 years before we yeah. left. Amy's a me mechanical engineer, and I got to tell you, bragging, Amy uh, developed a part of the fuel delivery system of the space shuttle. And okay. furthermore, she, she and a, this will touch a lot of, uh, of your viewers, listeners. Amy invented the thing that makes a Ranger, a Ranger bass boat metal flake which is uh, a long story and I'll spare it to you, but <laughs> when you see a Ranger bass boat in yeah. a Midwestern lake yeah. and it's got that nice, even sparkle, uh -huh. that's because Amy invented the uh, no way. machine that makes that possible. So, <laughs> and so when we came back to Florida, we're like, okay, is there a good radio station in beautiful Punta Gorda? Not so, so much. <laughs> is there an opportunity for an excellent mechanical engineer in Punta Gorda? Not and so there's much. not. Uh -huh. But Amy's stepmother, as I said, was doing uh -huh. this amazing thing. She was selling Medicare Advantage. Yeah, yeah. So we so didn't cool. know where it was going to go, but mm -hmm. I said, for about a thousand bucks or fifteen hundred bucks, we can find out. I yeah. mean, it's not the hardest business to right. get into. No, so we did the training and the licensing. Yeah, and then we said, well, now I guess we still need jobs. <laughs> yeah, we still need jobs. So you guys did it. So you got into the senior market. You focus on Med Advantage, and you did that for about ten years, right? Eleven, a little bit better. Eleven than, years, yes. a little bit, a little bit better than that. What brought you to that point? You think you know what? We're really thinking about getting out now. Tomorrow is promised to no man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when when you deal with seniors for 10 years, we got into the business. Everyone we worked with was 65, right? Sure. 10 years later, they're 75. And, and friend, you can see people age between 65 and 75, and it's pretty dramatic. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm just, looking just at you, look I'm at 69. Me. Yeah, right. What's that? Right. I said, just look so, at me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you remain young and beautiful. Oh, <laughs> but, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It, and the ones that you don't watch age, you watch yeah. pass away. Yeah. And it becomes heavy on a 69-year-old. Yeah. And yeah. Amy, you know, she's young and 60, but it, it's heavy on her, too. Yeah. And we thought these, between the ages between 65 and 75, you're active. I can do anything I want to do. Yeah. Except, you know, pick up 200 pounds. 
a bit, I can do anything I want to do. Yeah. I can travel anywhere. I can do anything. Mm -hmm. The tether between me and a physician is long and loose. Yeah. In five years, we don't know that it will be. Sure. And yeah. so that, that was number one, watching mm -hmm. our clients age mm -hmm. and knowing that I was with them. Yeah. Uh, was the number one thing. Mm -hmm. And then I, I'll tell you the number two thing. The older you get and the more experience you get in a business, the less tolerance you have for <laughs> uh, discrepancies, yeah. things that don't go exactly as you think they should go. Yeah. And you become frustrated with some of those changes. You go, why does it have to be this way? Well, it, it does. Mm -hmm. So get over that. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm 69. Amy's 60. Your portfolio is where we need it to be, and and tomorrow, number one, tomorrow yeah. is promised to go yeah. in. Well, and then so we resist the the temptation to stay in it because as I you know Southwest Florida, a target rich yeah. environment, the mm -hmm. commissions keep going up and up. Well, and I got that's an incentive to hang sure. on. <laughs> And you, you know, you guys have been really aggressive in your, you know, steadfast your book and your business has grown and the longer you're in it and the more seasoned you are and the more uh, known you are in the communities where you where you live and work it it gets easier i mean people know you your phone rings a lot more than it did in years one and two right absolutely and so it's, 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 harder to, it's like the fishing is good it's hard it's hard to quit it's sometimes hard to quit we go to the grocery store. We see our clients. Yeah. We we drive to the grocery store. We drive by three or four client homes. <laughs> you know, we're in a very targeted community. And as yeah. I said 20 times already, a target rich environment for a mm -hmm. Medicare salesperson. Yeah. So we've really grown in the community. We've enjoyed it. But we're resisting the urge to hang on and oh, work part time. And yeah. even you, John. Have said to me, well, you keep your license, you can work part time, you can take the ducks as they come in. I'm like, no, yeah, I we're know. drawing a line in the sand, yeah. and, and yeah. we are done. It, it was easy working with you. It was less easy working with insurance companies and prior yeah. uplines right. as we began to leave. Right when, when uh, I was surprised to learn that I needed a separation agreement for my prior upline, yeah. I, I. I'm an independent businessman. Yeah. Right. You know, we we take the risk ourselves. We right. absorb the expenses. Mm -hmm. We are independent. But then as we separate from our prior upline, we need what amounts to permission. Yeah. And yeah. I was startled. In fact, we have a great right. relationship, a great relationship with our prior upline. Mm -hmm. But that phone call got testy. <laughs> and, and we hung up. We were not good friends. Ah. Now, since then, I apologized. He yeah. Gave a little bit of an apology, both warranted. You know, we, we did it appropriately and yeah. we're still good friends, but yeah. it was testy. Yeah. And the second thing, dealing with you guys, uh, it goes back to your story about returning my phone call from the parking garage in Phoenix. You are always accessible, my friend. If I pick up the phone and call you, either you answer or I get an immediate text saying, in a meeting, can I call you in 23 minutes? And at 23 minutes in a second, I get the phone call. You are an excellent businessman in that manner. So it's great dealing with you and, by the way, your whole staff. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm out of order here, but Roderick, your, your yeah. man who's taking over our list, right. has been the consummate professional. Great. I email him with a question. I get an answer. I mean, sometimes one of our clients will call me yeah. and I'll take notes. I'll tell him, you got to call Broderick. I'll send yeah. Broderick a note. I'll say, you know, Joe Jones is calling. Here's his issue. Can you help yeah. him out? And Broderick is right back to me and he's yeah. right back to Joe Jones. Yeah. And I appreciate that. That's You're, awesome. Because that, part of it is, you know, we're moral and good people. Yeah. And and as we sell out our book of business, we're not selling out our friends who are 1,200 people who are Medicare eligible that work with us every day. Right. Or in days past. And when we don't just like drop them off and you are in Broderick's lap and say, bye, see you. Good luck with that guy. Hope he's yeah. a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we care about yeah. those people. But we want them to be taken care of. And I, I tell everyone who contacts me that we haven't sold you off to a uh, phone room. Joe Namath's cronies aren't going to be calling you up and trying to push something <laughs> on you. You know, these people know you. 
Yeah. They have your file. They're not a faceless phone. Yeah, room. that's the great. phrase I use. Wow. And I think my I think our clients take comfort in that. They know that truly we care about them and we've handed them to someone else who yeah. truly cares about them. You only have two options. You can either continue working. You can, well, three options. You can ghost all your clients if you just decide I'm going to retire and just not answer the phone. Yeah. Or you can sell your book. I can't continue working. I won't ghost my clients. That's rude. Just yeah. to the bottom of my heart, that's rude. So the, the last option is to sell your book to someone who's going to at least care about it as much as you do. And that's what we did. Um, what's next for the Betzes? What's next? We have uh, way more better guitars than we are players. <laughs> <laughs> we have a uh, garage full of bicycles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we have entire parts of this continent that we have not explored yeah. that we intend to explore on our bicycles. Well, guys, thank you. Thank you for your time and visiting and sharing everything. Really, really appreciate it. Really appreciate the friendship. And uh, we're going to do that recording that you we've talked about on the phone. I'll be down in Florida. That's a hard somewhere. song. That's a hard song for a guitar. You need to work, get sharp, sharp on it, Bill. I don't want any excuses when I show up down there. <laughs> what song is that? S Sister Golden Hair. That's right. That's my signature. So, uh, yeah. I got to look it up. Look I, it up, we'll Amy. We'll work on it. All right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay. Thanks so much. <laughs>